In this lesson, I will show you how to build an interactive item-based funnel report in Looter Studio. We're going to use data from Google Analytics 4. And in that report, you will be able to see data of all products or narrow down just to particular items. So go to lookerstudio.google.com and then click blank report. Here, select Google Analytics and then select your Google Analytics 4 property that you want to use in order to build a funnel. So I will go here, then select my G for property and click add. There are various ways how you can create funnels in Looker Studio. So in this video, I will be showing just one option. By default, you will have a table that looks something like this. So first I want to narrow down to just three events. When the item was viewed, when the item was added to your cart, and then when the item was purchased. And the report that I will build here will allow you to choose which items do you want to include in the funnel. For example, you can see the funnel completion of a particular product or maybe of several products. So first I will create a filter that will narrow down just to those three e-commerce events. So while I have selected this table, I will scroll down to filters and click add a filter. And here I will give this a name. So let's say include e-commerce events. And here I will select to include only those events where event name matches regular expression and I'm looking for view item, then add to cart and purchase because I have been tracking those events in this property. So I have item views, add to carts and the purchase events. So now let's click save. And here I will switch from the views metric to let's say users or sessions. So let's do total users. And here I see how many users viewed any product in a particular time period, then how many users made a purchase and how many users added any product to a cart. So now while I have selected this table, I will change its type to column chart, and then I can resize it. I could also hide this legend. So I could go to style and then scroll down. And here I can hide the legend. I could probably also hide the grid so I can mark it as transparent. Also, I see that sorting isn't correct. So I could change the sorting by total users. And right now this is the basic chart, but we are not done yet. In fact, let me move this a bit below. And here I could add two controls. The first one is the drop down list. So here I'm going to allow to pick certain products and this chart will start showing data based on that product. So instead of event name here, I will change to item name. Then I can also add another control, which is date range control. Now, if I click here, I might also see the not set because this selector right here does not have a filter applied. So it includes all events, not only e-commerce events. So I could add a filter to this selector. In fact, I could probably use that very same include e-commerce events selector. And here I see only those events that are related to e-commerce, which means that I can select certain products here. For this particular example, I don't need to show values so I can disable it, which means that I will just see the list of products. And here's my funnel. However, some details are missing. For example, I cannot easily or conveniently see the number of users in each column. I have to hover my mouse. So I can click here to always show the labels or the values so I can switch to style and then click show data labels. And here I see some numbers. Additionally, I could add some scorecards to display larger numbers. So I can do that by clicking add a chart, then select scorecard, or you can select scorecard with compact numbers if you're working with a larger business that has more users. So yeah, let me select that. And I will add one here. So here we see the total users, but this one shows all users, not just those who viewed an item. So while I have selected this, I could add a filter and I will create a new filter that will show only those who viewed at least one item. So event name exactly matches view item. Click save. And now the numbers are matching. This number is compact, which means that there is some rounding. Therefore, we see the difference right here and right here. If this was, let's say, a regular scorecard, 
then you would see more accurate numbers. So again, this is your choice if you want to see the compact numbers or not. Or maybe if you want, you can hide the labels. In fact, maybe I can even do that. So I will select this chart, then style and then hide data labels because I will have this number right here. Maybe also I should change the alignment to center. And then I can copy this and paste it and then drag it right here. And here I have to change the filter because it should be using the add to cart event. So I will scroll down, remove this filter and then add a new filter where I include only add to cart and then event name equals add to cart and click save. So if I hover my mouse here, you will see that the number is the same. And then finally, let's copy again, paste again, and then I will change the filter to purchase. So create a filter, include purchase events, and then event name equals to purchase and click save. So far so good, the numbers are matching. Now instead of the metric name, which is total users here, I could change to something more relevant. So I can do that by clicking here. First, you need to select the scorecard, then click here. And here we can rename it to viewed items or item. Then here we can change to add it to cart. And then here we can change to purchased. Let me move these a bit higher. So now let's just do a very basic test. If I select a particular date range, for example, October 25th to October 31st, apply, and then I change the item name to let's say just Google Analytics for course, here I can see how many users viewed that item, how many users added it to a cart, and then how many users purchased it. The next step that would be useful is maybe the abandonment rate and the completion rate. For example, what is the percentage of people who drop off and then the percentage of people who move forward. In this case, we can achieve this with data blending. So I can click this, then hold control key in my keyboard or shift, and then select this one, because first we are going to calculate the completion rate and the abandonment rate between these two steps. So while I have selected these two scorecards, I can do the right click and then blend data. And here it will already do some calculation, but in this case, it's doing the opposite. I want to divide added to cart by viewed item. So I can click here and then change the formula like that and then click apply. And here I see that 2.3% of people who viewed any item, or in this case, this particular item right here, only 2.3% of those added the product to a cart. In this case, I don't need the name of the metric, so I can go to style and then hide metric name, something like that. So this is the completion rate. Now we can do some quick styling. For example, I can drag it here then maybe change the color to green because that's more related to the success when people go from one step to another. Maybe I will resize this a bit and maybe I should even add some arrow from here to here and that arrow could be green. So I will click insert, then line. So let's do, I don't know, maybe something like this. I click it and then I can select that the end of the line as pointer, then I can make it thicker and its color could be something like light green, maybe a bit darker like this one. And then I could copy this arrow and then paste it and move it between these two metrics. And then I can also calculate the abandonment rate, which basically means 100% minus this one. So I can copy this, paste it, then move it, let's say right here, and then change the formula and do this one minus this and then click apply. And this will show that 97% of people dropped off. So I can now change the style of this element to let's say red. And then I could also probably add a red arrow. So I will copy this, then change the color and then maybe add it like that. Then let's do data blending between add to cart and purchase. So I select both of them and then right click blend data. Then let's update the formula. So I will divide purchased by add to cart, click apply. Then I will change its color to red as well, hide the metric number, then change the font size. 
Oh, actually, it should be the green color, like this. And then I can move it here. Then I can copy this red arrow, paste it, and move it right here. Then let's copy this metric, paste it, add it somewhere right here, and change the color to red, and also change the formula. So we will subtract this from 1 and click Apply. And now if I change, let's say, to All Products, then you will see that these metrics are also calculated properly. In fact, I could even maybe add some background or some widget to make this look a bit prettier, even though I have to admit this looks slightly ugly, but I am not a designer. So I can click Insert, then scroll down, Rectangle, and then add it somewhere right here. Then while I have selected this, I click Arrange, Order, and then Send to Back. Then maybe rearrange a bit, something like this, maybe a bit higher. And then I could change the color to slightly lighter. And then I can add a border shadow like this. Maybe I should even move everything slightly lower like that. Then I will resize this a bit. And maybe I should even add some table below and we could see the list of products and the number of users in each funnel step. So basically I can do that by clicking on this chart, making a copy, and then I will move this down and then I will change its type from chart to table, or actually not table, maybe we should select the pivot table. So pivot table is right here. And then here I will remove the achievement ID. I will move the event name to the column. So right now this table is filtered to three events and each event will have its own column. We have view item, add to cart and purchase. And then the rows could be the item names. So instead of this event name, I could click here and select item name. And the metric is total users, which is fine. I could probably redrag this a bit to make the product names more readable. And in fact, I could even scroll down and enable cross filtering, which means that I as a user can click on products in this table. And then based on this selection, the charts and the numbers right here will also change. So I can select multiple items here or I can select one item here. So now let's click view and check what we have. So right now we are looking at all users and their metrics. Oh, well, also I realized that this arrow and this metric should have been right here. So let me quickly change this like that. And now if I click view, I could click for example on this product and this is this product's data. If you want to select several products, then first you will need to deselect the selection in the table and then select needed items in the picker right here. So I will deselect everything and then I will select, let's say, all courses that contain GA Force, like that. And that is how you can build an interactive item based funnel report in Looker Studio. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to my channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.